So welcome back to the Touch Designer tutorial. So we start with again with the default or standard 3D operation with the geometry, lights and camera. And the result will be through and render into the output window. So in the last few exercise, we work with the use of particle system to play around with different kind of force where you can use the animated effect to create different form of particle animation. And in the last few exercise, we also make use of the channel operator by using something like the beat or the noise to create a lot of randomness or other some form of automatic movement of the either the particles or the other 3D models in the scene. And in this exercise, we start with play around with another form of channel operator. So in the very beginning of the arrangement in alphabetical order, you see a number of audio commands. Actually, you can input some sort of audio signal to your touch designer project and make use of the audio signal as a way to create a sequence of numbers and those numbers will refer to for example like the frequency and also the amplitude or the volume of those signals. So we start with the use of the first one audio stream. So it's kind of streaming the audio from the external source and then put back to the touch designer project. In order to select the audio file, you press the P to pop up the parameter window. And then in the file section, you try to locate your file over here. So when you pay back your animation, you see the waveform within the audio stream object which corresponding to the frequency and amplitude of the sound signal in that particular mp3 file. And at the point you do not hear anything. If you would like to, for example, monitor the playback of the sound in real time, you can add another object for the monitoring. So once you connect the audio stream signal, the output to the input signal or the source to the audio out box, you hear the sound playing back from your sound card, either in the speaker or in your headphone. So lots of cases you may like, for example, to turn off it in order to, to streamline the CPU performance. So the next step is once we can have the audio information over here. So for a normal stereo file, you have the channel 1 and channel 2. And how we can interpret the audio signal and then use it as a parameter to control, for example, the visual display of the 3D objects over here. So we can have the use of the number to change the translation, rotation, the scale. And to start with, we take a look of other audio information. And one of the very useful commands from the channel operator will be the pitch. So the pitch is a form of summary or some kind of information where you obtain from your audio signal by dragging the information out there and then put it inside and it will give you four pieces of information so they come with two groups one with each of the channel for example you have the channel 1 and channel 2 so if you start the playback you can see the change in the number and for channel 1, you have the pitch information and also the volume information. For channel 2, it's the same. So we can make use of those change in number, for example, in order to control like the size of this particular 3D object. 
So we start with this simple exercise. So when we monitor the change in this number, for example, we could select like using the volume information as a way to to create a bit of the whistle and visualize it in the form of the size of this particular donut shaped objects. So the next step is we select only the volume information and discard the pitch. So it come with a select command in the channel operator. And you drag the output and put it into the input. And within the select operator, you go to the parameter window and you can have a look the channel name, so the star or asterisk mean all of those four channels. And you can, for example, put in some sort of wildcard characters like star VOL. So that means you have everything start with everything and either the channel 1 or channel 2. But the ending will be VOL, is the volume. And then once you press enter, it will only give you the two pieces of information, volume for channel 1 and volume for channel 2. And then the next step is we make use of these two numbers. And if you, for example, monitor the change in the size of this number, it's probably between 0 and 1. It's not too big at this point. And of course, you can make use of the command we have learned before, is the math, and to perform some calculation. So in the math, we have the tab called multiply and add. So you can do a multiplication, for example, by 2 over here to increase the number by 2 times. And then once you have this one, you see the change in the number. It's double the original. And then we're going to make use of these two numbers to control, for example, the size of this geometry. And we'll make use of the channel 1 volume and channel 2 volume to to modify the scales right here. So it's follow the step we have done in the last exercise by clicking the wheel active. Select the channel 1 information, the volume information, and drag over here to the scale for the X. Export the chart and do the similar thing for the Y. And then you disable the wheel active again and start the playback. So after you did the playback, you will see, for example, this change in number will reflect in the change in the size of this particular donut. And if you would like to see it clearly in other direction, you can also, for example, change a little bit of the rotation. And then you can have a look of the change in the size according to the rhythm of the music. See the overall result will be something like this one. So this is the first piece of work we make use of the audio information to control the physical dimension of uh, 3D objects.